Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. So I'm going to talk about uh, how you can build a news aggregator using streams and functional JavaScript. Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, Eirik Willum. I'm actually not uh, uh, a freelancer anymore. Uh, so I work at Scandinavia Online. And we do, uh, uh, we, we're a news curator and aggregator, so quite a coincidence. So streams. Uh, I've been intrigued by, by streams since I started using Node. And we all have all of these uh, really cool tools like Browserify, Gulp, and all that sweet stuff. Uh, and until this year, and that was basically the things I, I were using streams for. Um, but then I thought about how, um, what about building like a complete application um, using uh, mostly streams? And what does that look like? So I've, I've had this fascination with the content aggregation for a long time. And a couple of years ago, I wanted to build uh, my own news aggregator, kind of like a, a do-it-yourself alternative to something like Feedly. Uh, that would automatically aggregate all the stuff you want to uh, read from, uh, yeah, from your favorite sources. So the, kind of the main objectives with the project was that I wanted to, to collect uh, articles from RSS feeds, but I also wanted to be able to parse websites uh, into um, like a, a JSON data structure of articles. And then I wanted to be able to extend those articles with the content uh, of the article itself. And maybe stuff like uh, the, the social data, like how many shares it has on Facebook, how many shares it has on Twitter. Uh, and then expose some kind of APIs that could, so that uh, I was able to build some kind of front-end application on top of this. So um, at that time, uh, yeah, most of my code were what I would describe as uh, callback hell. Um, but, uh, but I had also just discovered uh, async. So my first attempt kind of looked something like this, where I would do something in series and then do something in parallel inside there and do something forever inside of those, those parallels. Um, I, I got it working and uh, uh, it was fine and dandy, but uh, it still it didn't make much sense when I looked at the code like two months later. Um, and this is just like the, the surface of it. So I thought that um, recently I wanted to try to redo this whole thing and, and check if, uh, yeah, there, there has to be a better way of solving this uh, uh, using some, some better way. Um, so my, my uh, new approach was that I wanted to experiment with using this really modular thing uh, where I would use streams and I'm saying functional-ish here because if I say that this is functional, some real functional programmers might kick my ass or uh, yeah, throw me out. Um, and this was in hopes of, of uh, controlling the complexity. So I would have modules that do one thing and I would have uh, this kind of uh, functional way of doing it where I would use like map and filter and have these nice uh, black box abstractions so that I could then like transform data in a, in a declarative way. So to be able to, to collect articles, I need some, uh, uh, I, I need two modules here, or two functions. I need something that could uh, map an RSS feed over to my article format, and I'd need something that could map or parse a website into the same article format. So um, that would be just, it would be just a function just a function that takes some kind of specification and then calls back with the, uh, with the result, with a list of articles. So this would be like a, just a black box abstraction 
where I wouldn't care what what uh, uh, what is behind here. So I, I would want to use a, um, a pretty similar specification to like parse the site and parse the uh, RSS feed, and say that it, look, it would look something like this. So just an object where I would say that, okay, uh, this is a site. Um, go to this URL, use this template to try to parse the site and um, make it into articles. So we're just, yeah, just transforming a specification into a list of articles. And the result might look something like this, so that you just have an array um, that contains those articles, like the URL of the article, like the author, title, um, maybe the image, what position it has on the page right now. Um, and I also want to be able to fetch the article content. Maybe I want to use it for some kind of classification. Um, maybe I want to use it to, uh, to create some offline uh, reading or annoyance-free reading experience. And that too would just be, it would just be a simple function that just takes a URL in and then just uh, calls back with the, with the content. So now we're just mapping a URL into article content. And that might look, it might just be a string containing what was actually the content of the article. And then I, I want to be able to fetch like the, the social data, maybe to emphasize uh, popular articles or use that data for some kind of uh, processing, I don't know. And that too would just be, just be simple functions like get shares from Facebook, it takes a URL and then just calls back with the number of shares it has on Facebook. So now we're just, we're just mapping a URL into a number of shares. Just a number. So one of my goals uh, uh, with this approach was that uh, I wanted to have as little imperative code in the application itself uh, as possible. Um, and now I want to use all of those previous functions to extend my articles. Um, and I was thinking, how can I do this declaratively so that I'm not manually mutating the objects? So this is what it looks like when you extend an object using uh, something like uh, object assign. So that you already have an article and you want to extend that uh, object with something. So you, you just say, um, the extended article is uh, that I'm assigning this extension to the original object. And now we have an object that contains both. But in, but in this case, it falls a bit short. Because what if I want to use the URL of that article in that existing object to pass that through a function and then attach the result of that back on my object. And what if that function is asynchronous? Um, I, uh, I don't know if it's me or, or um, that it um, just doesn't exist uh, uh, in that way, but I ended up making my own uh, Frankenstein library. Uh, I wouldn't recommend anyone uh, using this. Um, I'm guessing that I could probably do something similar with uh, like Lodash or, or Ramda, but I guess I wasn't smart enough to, to figure that out. Um, but the main point is that you shouldn't have to manually and, or imperatively mutate your objects in the, uh, in the application. So this would be an example of declaratively uh, extending an object. So here we have uh, the article object, just contains a URL and a title. Um, and we just declare an extension. Here I'm um, kind of pretending that JavaScript has tuples um, by using an array. So I'm saying that the extension here is that I wanna, wh whenever I um, uh, want to extend an object, I'll pick the URL from the existing object, I'll pass that through the function, and I'll attach it back to the, um, the content property. So that means that 
with my uh, with my library, I created a function that uh, we'll call uh, extend with. We'll pass uh, the extension in, and that returns a function that w whenever you call that with an object and a callback, it'll call back with that um, a complete object containing now the content of the article as well. So that, one, uh, that was my way of trying to solve uh, declaratively extending an object in JavaScript. So streams in uh, Node.js, they're awesome. Um, but vanilla streams are, uh, in this case, uh, I felt that they were a bit low level. And I needed to implement all of these higher level abstractions myself, like map and filter and all those uh, uh, functions that I needed. And the error handling is a bit tedious. Um, and also, like, this, like splitting and merging streams has to be done manually. And there's uh, all of that object mode thing. But thankfully, someone uh, had made my life a bit easier. The same guy that made async.js has made a library that's called Highland.js. It's, um, um, it's almost like Lodash. It's a utility belt, but it's um, uh, made for streams. So this has a lot of uh, uh, great higher level abstractions, like map, filter, merge, fork. And you can do all of these really nice things to your streams. And the bonus is that you can use almost anything as a source um, for your streams. But it didn't have everything that I needed. So just to cover the holes, uh, Lodash has a functional um, version where, where the arguments are flipped, meaning that you can uh, do meaningful partial application with them. So let's just see uh, how this looks. So here I'm starting out by uh, creating a stream from an array. I tried to like uh, uh, in the comment here tr try to like make it uh, look like a stream and not an array. I'm not s sure what I was trying to do there, but. Um, and I'm just creating this uh, this function called isSite, which really is just a function that takes an object, it checks if that uh, it, it takes the type property of that object and checks if it's site. So it just returns a boolean. So now um, we'll uh, declare a stream that is the articles. Uh, when we parse the HTML. So we're just forking that stream and we'll f we're filtering it, getting only the specification that is for websites. And we're just saying, um, we want to parse these articles from HTML, the function we, uh, we made earlier. I want to do five of those in parallel. So that means that we now have a, a stream of these arrays of articles. So every object in this stream would be an array of articles from that source. And we can do the same thing with the RSS feed. It, it would just be a different predicate. We'll just check if this is, is of type feed. And we'll filter that. And we'll just parse it through uh, the correct function, parse articles from RSS. So now we have two streams. We have these two uh, streams containing like all of our uh, articles from the sources. But we really just want a single stream um, that would stream all of our articles. So in Highland, that's, uh, that's really simple. You just declare a new stream where you take your input streams and you just say that you want to merge them. And then I want to flatten them so that I have a stream of these single articles. So yeah, now we have a, a stream of articles that we can do anything we want with. So now I want to create those declarative extensions 
that will allow me to add those Facebook shares to my uh, uh, articles and then to add the, the content of the article itself. So now I would just um, declare a new stream which will contain those extended articles and I would just map them through those functions. So I would just map it through to make it add the social data. I would just map it through to add the content. So now I have a stream that contains uh, all the data I want. So now a single article might look something like this. So now we have the URL, the title, we have the content, and we have all the shares. So let's try to just uh, uh, take a step back and do this uh, um, uh, app from the beginning. So, and um, let's imagine that we have some uh, new functions now. We have a function for storing articles in the database. We have a, a function for updating articles in the database. And we have a function for pulling these uh, uh, specifications from the database. So we would just start with, we want to have a, a stream that every 30 seconds, it would just pull all of these specifications or templates from the database. And then we would just flatten those because the result from the database would be an array of these uh, objects. So now we have a stream of these specifications. Then we would declare two streams. One that is the articles from uh, the R uh, RSS parsing. One that is the articles from the website parsing. Then we would create a stream of articles that contains uh, all the articles where we merge and flatten it. And now we would declare um, a stream of those new articles. So, and that stream would be, we'd say that we'd we'll, we want to fork the article stream. And then we want to check, does this already exist in a database? Um, if it doesn't exist, we want to add the content and then we want to save it to the database. So this would result in a stream of articles that has been saved to the database. And the same thing with updated articles. So we'd want to check if, do, does this exist in the database? If it does exist, we'll add like the, the social data from Facebook or Twitter. And then we would update this in a database. So this would be a stream of articles that were updated. So now the only thing we have to do is we have to kick this off somehow. So we just say that, okay, for every new article, we just want to log that and uh, start the stream. And we'll do the same with uh, the updated articles. So let's see, I was going to try to... This is going to look horrible, though. Um, so when you kick this thing off, it'll just start collecting articles from all those sources. And you'll see that it fetches the content. Probably going to kill my data plan. Um, and the nice thing here is that this will just continue to run. So now you have this kind of automatically uh, aggregating uh, all of your news and conditioning uh, a database collection so that you'll always have um, all the newest articles with content uh, that you can build APIs on top of. So, so in addition, So here's, here's like the result. Uh, so now uh, we have this do-it-yourself alternative to Feedly. Um, let's see. And then we could use 
the content to create this distraction-free uh, uh, reading things. Um, Yeah, so let's see if I can get this away. Uh, I just want to do one last thing and show you the code because I've been lying a bit. <laughs> uh, no. What? I've been lying a bit because it doesn't look as nice as I'm uh, uh, presenting it. Um, to get this up and running, uh, this is kind of like the dirty parts. Creating the functions that makes this really readable. Um, you have to use a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, low dash, and uh, yeah, re-arging, currying, doing a lot of, uh, of uh, dirty uh, orchestration. But then, when all of that is done, you have just these simple streams that process all your data. And the nice thing here is that there's not a single variable in your application. So the whole application is in a single file here. There's not a single um, uh, imperative piece of code here. Everything is just constants. Um, so now you're able to use this kind of black box abstractions and rather um, uh, test those modules by themselves and just put the application together using these, uh, these streams. If you want to take a look at the code, it's on GitHub. All of the stuff, the front end, the back end, everything. Uh, in the process, I had to make some some tools as well, um, um, mainly uh, some tools that would uh, make, make me able to seamlessly pipe streams between node processes so that you could just pipe from one process and then just uh, receive it in another. Um, I guess that's uh, uh, a topic for a later time. Um, so. Yeah, that's it.